finding money opportunities in tough times. How of you think this is a good topic? Flesh and blood did not reveal it to our pastorate. <laughs> Can we one more time absentia celebrate Pastor Amos Fenwa? Come on. Make it bigger, bigger, bigger. And our youth pastor and all the entire pastorate team, amazing. You guys are really privileged to have a prophet in the house. I hope you know. It's an opportunity. In the Pentecostal, we don't have so much of that prophetic. So, God bless pastor one more time. Right? So, finding money opportunities in what? In tough times. Next. So, let's go through 2 Kings 7 verse 1. We're going to read it together, everybody. One to go. Are we ready? One to go. Then Elisha said, Listen to the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, this was the prophet Elisha prophesying in a time where there was heavy famine. And he was saying, by this time tomorrow, I mean, people are dying because of famine. People are selling their children. It was a very terrible time. And the man was saying, well, by this time tomorrow, <laughs> what was selling for 5,000 naira will soon start selling for 5 naira. So all the professors with their long glasses came and said, no, 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 no. You see, by the mathematical equation, by geographical and exponential calculations, right? It cannot happen. I hope you are not joining them about Nigeria. You know, there are some of us who have become professor of analysis that leads to paralysis. Hmm? In this country, nobody can make it. Say your own. Right? Me, I will make it. Are we together now? Say your own. But for me, oh, and my family, even in tough times, we will make it. Are we together now? And the prophet said, by this time tomorrow. And I've come, like prophet Elisha, to say, by this time next year, they will not know you again. God will so lift you up. God will so change your story that people will be looking again. Is this you? Oh, I need to hear a louder amen. That they will be wondering, is this you? Or is this somebody else? Yes, there are tough times. And times can be tough. And I've been through a few of them myself. I remember losing my mother in this country to ovarian cancer. I, I, I always say to people, one of my biggest regrets was losing my mother. Because I, I, we had been taken out to a teaching hospital. I told me just got swe you were just swelling up. We didn't know what was wrong. And for six months, they couldn't diagnose her. Six months. Only at some point, you know, because uh, uh, she was a civil servant. They said, okay, let's gather money and take her to a private hospital. What the teaching hospital in Nigeria could not diagnose in six months, they did in four days in a teaching hospital. But the cancer had spread. Two days after surgery, she passed on. Here was what was more painful for me. The day we were to bury her, I went to retrieve her corpse. And they gave me a death certificate and the entire bill. Ladies and gentlemen, it was less than one million naira. And I've always kept thinking about it. So are you saying that if I had had one million naira, or if anybody amongst her children, or in her closest family had had one million naira, six months prior, one year prior, maybe she would have lived longer, longer. And this is one of the reasons why I came to a conclusion that two poor people cannot help themselves. There is nothing to love about poverty. May you not lose your loved ones to understand that. Amen. That there's nothing spiritual about poverty. Nothing godly about it. Are we together now? But I remember during that tough time, 
the Holy Spirit said something to me. I have taken away your crunches so that you can walk on your two feet. What is the Lord saying to you right now? Some of you, God is saying, this tough time is the season I have ordained to lift you to your next level. Amen. For me, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't even want to hear that story. I told the Holy Spirit, keep your prophecy to yourself. Which countries have you removed? <laughs> but years later today, I haven't seen how far I've come. Are we together now? I realized that I probably would have been lazy if my mother was alive. Because she was the breadwinner. She was everything. Even when I'm praying to God for money, I'm praying that God will touch my mother. Right? So that she will send me money. I did not know what it meant to truly believe God until my mother died. So during tough times, you will learn to know that only God can do it. How many of us are like that? That you've come to a phase in your life. People have so disappointed you. Government has failed. Family has failed. Everybody has failed. You know that only God. And I see that God come true for you. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? I say I see that God do what? Come true for you. Even in these tough times. Let's Next slide. So, every, can we read it one to go? Every problem is an opportunity for a what? A creative solution. Every problem. If I tell people, every problem has a money equivalent. There is money in every problem. Opportunity in every problem. I remember it was during, you know, 2015, just after the election. Dollar started, Naira started slipping down. And it was that time I made up my mind. It's now time to start earning in foreign currency. And that journey was what led us to opening office in Dubai, opening office in US. And it's one of the best decisions we've ever made. Every problem has an opportunity for creative what? Solution. Every problem. Opportunity for a creative solution. The question is, are you seeing the cup half full or half empty? Are you asking yourself, what are the opportunities in the Nigeria of today? In this tough season, where is the money? Because the money is somewhere. The money were not burnt. The money is still there. Just that it is flowing in another different direction. Are we learning something here? In another word? different direction. That's why they call it currency. It moves. Is this making sense at all? Now, where is it moving to? That's now the question. I need three volunteers. I love to do this demonstration because it will just make this very clear for us. Three volunteers. Three volunteers. You can come in front here. Here is the first lesson in this entire training today. The world, opportunities does not answer to the smartest. But for the first person to dive in, right? Joshua, check my wallet. They have 50, 50 pounds each. And I'm using that just to prove a point. Many of the opportunities that will turn your life around will just be a function of, let me dive in. Are we together now? How many of you wanted to come out but didn't come out? Let me see your answer. You wanted to. But should it be me? Could it be me? Eh? What are the chances? What will it even ask us to do? What if I can't do it? Analysis leading to what? Paralysis. I tell people this, and please don't ever forget this. Entrepreneurship is like a man. I, I wish they play, I don't know, the videos are not, the audio is not playing. If they had played, if they can play that video at the last point, 
um, I have a video on Steve Acta University. You see me doing parachutes from 13,000 feet above the sea level. That's what entrepreneurship is. But you don't have parachute. You are jumping from 30,000 feet and you are figuring out how you will land on your way down. That is how many people have struggled. They were not sure of what they were going into. Oftentimes people ask me, were you sure you'll be this successful? I wasn't sure. I didn't have a choice. That's why that scripture that I say, whatsoever your hand find to do, do it well. Most great people, it wasn't their passion. Is Dangote passionate about sugar or about salt? Or is he passionate about petrol? Are we learning here? Because a lot of people have deceived us and, and just turned things around in our mind. A lot of the opportunity, you will just dive in and then you figure it out on your way. So, what's your name? Fumilayo, your name. God's power, your name. Eh? Benga. Okay. So, let's call Fumilayo. Your new name is Money, aka Money. Do you like the name? Hallelujah. Amen. Your name again. God's power. Mm. Real power. Your new name is Value. Okay? And then, Mr. Benga here, you are looking for money. Are we together now? So let's be in circle. Money will be in front. You that you are looking for money, you will be after money. And then, value will be at behind. Just be moving in circle, okay? Just move in circle. Now, this is the typical thing every one of us is doing. We are chasing money. That's what everybody is doing today. Ha, Omo, anywhere money do, Omo, let's chase it. Let's chase it. Now, let me tell you what the richest and wealthiest people are doing. They are not chasing money. You can stop. We, remember we say value. Now, when they were circling, can you move again? Just be moving. What do you notice in this circle? What is money chasing? Do you see now? So, because... Money is chasing value. He is not chasing value. He's busy chasing money. He's hardly ever able to touch money. So let him reverse the it now. You stop. Start chasing value. Stop chasing money. Yes. Then move. What did you notice? Come on now. What did you notice? Suddenly money is what? Have you learned something this morning? Huh? Please, see him for your 50 pounds each. Right? <laughs> Are we together now? You need to stop this rat race. Where is the value? Because money is only a means of exchange for what? For value. Once I give you value, you have no choice but to pay me. Are we learning here? But oftentimes, everybody is chasing money. We leave value behind. Money itself is chasing something. But the day you prioritize to say, I will start chasing what? Value. What happened? Money begin to what? To chase you. In every problem, there is a what? Opportunity for creative solution that will ultimately give you money. Next slide. Okay? John 9, 4. He says, want to go, let's read. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is what? Day. The night cometh where no man can what? Can work. One of the biggest things, I, I went viral this week. I don't know if you saw the video. Huh? You saw it. A few of us didn't see it. And it was a video of me speaking somewhere in Port Harcourt. I was talking about how Yahoo Yahoo started when I was on campus. Okay? And how I made up my mind. And you can go check. It's on Instagram. It's on TikTok. How I made up my mind that I'm not going to do Yahoo. But in future, I will not be less than a Yahoo man. 
because I will go the legitimate way. And I said in that video, I said, how many Yahoo boys are as wealthy as I am today? And I have peace of mind on top of my own wealth. I'm not running away. FBI is not chasing me. <laughs> right? <laughs> are we together now? Only to see the comment. You need to see the comment. Two dead not, a couple of bloggers carried it. Ah, leave. If I, they were calling me pastor, I don't know where they thought. I didn't, I'm not pastor in any church. They, Yahoo pastors too. You know, leave Yahoo people alone. And it shows you how bastardized the system has become. How morally bankrupt we've become. I must walk the walk of him that what? That sent me. There is dignity in labor. There is pride in work. A decent one. There is joy in the fact that what is in your hand is legitimate. And it's a matter of time. It may take a while. Some people may look like they are doing better than you today. Give it time. God will lift you up and you will soon do better. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Next slide, because of time. One of the first things you want to do during tough times, if you are serious about finding money opportunity, is this quote that I've mentioned. You must be a salesman. Okay? This quote says, if you can shamelessly sell, you are going to be stinkingly rich. The first principle to develop or culture or skill to develop is your ability to sell. Even though you are chasing value, even though you have value, if you don't know how to sell value, you'll be a poor man. And guess what? The person who doesn't even have the value will be the one making Tell your neighbor, what are you selling? What are you selling? Value that you are selling. Let me say it. You must build capacity to sell. A lot of us don't know that every day you are still selling, even if you don't want to. Right? The day you talk about toothpick, you've, I mean, of us say, I just used close-up this morning. You've marketed close-up. Oh, I, 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 I need to take a, a bottle of Coke. What have you done? In the subconscious of those people, they are now thinking of what? Of Coca-Cola. What's in your body? And almost as if to say, he has said we are sick. And all the cells begin to fall sick. And that when a man says, I am healthy, it's as if they all go to each other. And say, he says, I am declaring there is a lifting up. Shout aloud, hallelujah. Number two, be creative. There is a creative capacity in every one of us. Be creative. Number three, seize the day. Like they just did now. I said I need three volunteers. Boy, in everything. I love to play golf. And my favorite golf guy is, is a gentleman called Justice in Abuja. Oh boy, he's gone through everything. But he's always excited. You need to see the joy in him. And I told him one day, I said, the reason why I, you are my favorite person I play golf with is your joy. It's your joy. Joy and wealth, they go together. See a rich man that is sad. It's a matter of time. He will lose all his wealth. Just watch it. But see a poor man that is happy. It's a matter of time. He will soon strike gold. Joy, excitement, gladness. Number seven, be grateful for what you have. The Bible says godliness with contentment is what? It's great gain. Everybody still needs more, including Dan Gote, including Bill Gates, including Louis Vuitton uh, Bernard, who is the richest man in the world, including Elon Musk. Every rich man still needs more. So, at whatever level, be grateful. Tap your neighbor and say, be grateful. Be grateful. Be contented. While you strive for more, thank God for where you are and what you have. Right? And lastly, keep things in perspective. A lot of us, we love to exaggerate in the negative. No. 
It's just a challenge. It will soon what? Pass away. It's just a phase. Life is in phases. Men are in sizes. Live your size per time. Put things in perspective. Oh, I can't wear designers. Have you designed your bank account? I mean, have you seen the richest people in the world wear designers? The only rich man in this world that wears designer is the owner of Louis Vuitton. And it is his company. So why won't he wear it? Am I making sense at all? Have you seen Bill Gates in designers? Dan Gote in designers? You know that some people say they now. Some women now are not able to buy Mary Kay. That's the headache. My mates are buying Mary Kay. <laughs> Is that an issue? Put things in what? Perspective. Though my beginning may be small, my latter end shall greatly increase. Somebody shout a louder hallelujah. hallelujah. Next slide. So let's look at ways to make money. Right? Remember, we're finding opportunities in high times, right? Number one, I want to recommend to use e-commerce. Everybody say e-commerce. The, the, the number three richest man in the world is Jeff Bezos. And he made it through Amazon, just doing an e-commerce business. And my, my, I, mean, I remember my wife is big time in e-commerce now. She handles a lot of our e-commerce business. And how did she come about it? Every month, I would send her money for upkeep. And she kept giving me stories of how the economy is difficult, how my children are eating so hard, and they eat a lot. <laughs> okay? And she needed more money. So at some point, I said to her, I said, Madam, I teach people on different businesses they can do. Why not pick one of it and start doing? So that whatever I give you, if it's not enough, you add to it from your own. And she picked e-commerce as a business to start doing. Today, not only has she made a lot of money from it, she has raised billionaires in the business who today are making a lot of money. In fact, one of our, my wife's students started importing phone accessories. Right? Today, she supplies all the top dealers in Computer Village and she's doing billions in transactions. E-commerce. And the beautiful thing about e-commerce, you can start it with little capital. Pick a niche. I'll only be selling shoes. I'll only be selling human hair. I'll only be selling, you know, daily consumer moving products, something everybody's using. There are websites you can... I mean, my wife has never been to China, and she's bought products... Tons and tons from China, from Turkey. Okay, she's been to Turkey once, I think. Yeah. But she's been ordering from all these countries without even going there. Are we learning at all? However, let me may emphasize that you need training. Tap your neighbor say, training is the secret for reigning. Oh, make it louder. So every of these ways I'm mentioning... This is just to point you. You need to now go for proper training. Does that make sense at all? Next is becoming an author and a speaker. I charge $20,000 to speak. Right? My one-on-one -on -one coaching program is $20,000. I've written 42 books. Every day, money hits my account. A lot of times, people think my lifestyle is because I'm into real estate. I make a lot of money. In fact, sometimes... Um, I have more liquid than some of my, 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 my subsidiaries, companies that I own. Okay? Because I have been able to build the skill of being a speaker and being an author. Right? As I speak to you, I have a UN invitation in Switzerland. I, I mean all over. My engagement is crazy till the end of the year. So, that is also a way you can build legitimate income. Number three, Forex and crypto. Now, I must warn you, this is a high-risk type of business. The same way you make the money is the same way you can lose the entire money. So what is my advice? I have a powerful quote. Always learn about the business before doing the business. Always invest in the knowledge of a business before what? Doing the business. All this culture of I will give somebody money 
they will not do the business for me. Huh? It's a recipe for what? For disaster. A lot of people have lost their money that way. Why not learn the business yourself? Are we together now? Why not go to somebody who is already successful, not motivational speaker? He does the business. He knows how to do it. Learn from the person and then pick it up from there. Number four, digital marketing consulting. This was how I started 15 years ago. I was helping businesses to learn how to make money. Can I get five more minutes, please? Because, you know, the whole thing took some of my time. Right? So I was learning how uh, I started helping companies, Chivita, PZ. Many of them, I helped them to... Uh, I started with Buck SMS. Later, I started email marketing. Later, I started social media marketing. Later, I started website. Okay? It was one of the businesses I did for seven solid years before expanding into real estate. Are we together now? So you can build capacity to start helping companies market their products and services online. There's a lot of money in that as well. Next is what? Software vending. I hope you know that all these people calling themselves software developers, many of them cannot code one thing. Right? There are platforms you can go, literally, code canyon and so on and so forth and you can buy what we call a white label software put your name on top as the owner of that software and you can start selling it for people to use the software on a regular basis and you make money i'll give you an example how many of you use paid filters on ig women but you pay maybe two dollars every month for the filter come on women now we're in church now you want to deny. <laughs> right? These are what? Softwares that you can go buy the white label. Instead of paying somebody else, people will start downloading your software and they are paying you $2 every month. Myself and my partner will launch a software to help people do mobile app without having coding knowledge. We made $2 million in one year from that software. Okay? Number five, software vending. Well, I have good news for you because I know some of you say, how do we learn this? If you go to my YouTube, Dr. S. Akintayo, I have free videos on all these businesses there. Are you happy to know that? So if you want to clap, clap very well. Right? So you can go watch a more detailed video that puts you through step by step because this Sunday service, I don't have much time. Next. Okay, I give you five more business, but let's look at this scripture. Okay, this is 1 Kings 10, 15 to 17. One to go, let's read together. Beside that from traveling merchant, from the income of traders, from all the kings of Arabia, and from the governors of the country, and King Solomon made 200 largest shields of handmade golds, and 600 shekels of gold went into each shield. He also made 300 shekels of hammered gold, and three miners of gold went into each shield. The king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Next. Now, if you look at... Okay, they, they, they cut it off. But that scripture told you how Solomon became the richest man in the world. You know, we just read the Bible. You say, oh, and God blessed Solomon. Right? And then Solomon became rich. This scripture gave you certain strategy. Solomon started, you know, coining certain type of gold. Started branding gold. It's, he had several products and services. And he was trading with different kings of different parts of the world. Are we learning at all? Solomon was also a consultant to kings. The Bible says King Sheba came for, to consult Solomon and she bought gold. So when you read the scripture, you need to begin to meditate about what did these people do to get what they what they got. It wasn't just abracadabra. Okay, five more business you can go into. Digital content creation monetization on YouTube, on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram. Right? You'll be shocked how much you can make. 
as a digital content creator. So for me now, all my content, I am always repurposing them. And they've helped me to grow. I now have over 2 million followers across social media platform. Right? And we have started monetizing it. Most of my sales have sold over a billion dollars worth of real estate. They all came through social media. Because I wasn't from a rich family where I knew rich uncles. Right? But my social media content attracted people who could afford what I was selling into my life. And we did business. Are we learning at all? Mini manufacturing, right? You can start manufacturing yogurt, soap. I don't know if you know cedar yogurt. Cedar yogurt. Cedar yogurt started with one of our pastor's wife. In fact, he will come to the house. He's so angry because the wife will have littered the entire house doing yogurt. Today, they are worth billions today. But they started the entire manufacturing in the house. You can start making beat, making soap, making little things. Now, using technology to then scale it. Using the... You know, some of us, our problem is this degree. Oh, I hope you know. You know, masters, MBA. You know that's the problem. I've sold popcorn before. I've hawked electronics before. I've done trade fair where I sell books before. Graduates. I used to paste poster from some water to Ikeja along. Because I had to do my marketing myself. I didn't have money to do TV or radio. Okay? Con um, construction. The guy that used to make my family home tiles, he didn't go to school. He only had primary six. He's a multi-millionaire from just doing tiles. You will make more money from painting than bank salary. Turning yourself to a female painter or a male painter. Metal works. You know, I'm into construction. I mean, we're into development. Woodwork. These are areas we're looking for quality people to do work in. Selling food items online. You know, yesterday we were at our, uh, our company's dinner at a co-hotel. And one of those who won our grant, we, we give out $5,000 to small businesses. One of them, she sells food items online. And the grant she got, she had expanded now. But she started online. You can buy Gary Ewa. Just order it on her website. They will deliver it to your house. Then number 10, real estate. Okay? Let's read one scripture and we'll wrap up. Are you blessed today at all? Are you blessed? Are you seeing the opportunities? Amen. Genesis 21 to 18. Let's, let's put it on the screen. And we'll wrap up with that scripture. Genesis, let's just, Genesis 21 to 18. Is this one or seven? This one. Okay, one to go, everybody, let's read. And Abraham journeyed from hence towards the southern country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shaw and sojourn in Gera. Next. And Abraham said to Sarah, his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, the king of Jera, sent and took Sarah. Next. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by the night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. The place of the supernatural. Right? If you're into business, you better know the place of what? The supernatural. Next. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Next. Says, he is not unto me, she is my sister. And she even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hand have I done this. Next. And God said unto him in the dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore, suffer I thee not to touch her. Next. Now, therefore, 
restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou <laughs> shalt surely die, thou and all that are dying. Now, because of time, how many of you know that Abraham was a businessman? Wouldn't double as a man of God, as a prophet. Are we together now? Pure businessman. And this is one of the, the, the arguments I have been making with the church. All of us cannot become pastors. Are we together now? But the biggest title is a child of God. Can everybody chorus it? The biggest title is that I am a child of God. That's the greatest title. And that's who Abraham is. He was a child of God who enjoyed the blessing of the Lord. But in this story, and this is very important, you will see how Abraham was a businessman. He came to that land and was farming and had businesses. And God used Abimelech again to give him land, to give him gold, to give him cattle, to give him silver. I have come to pray for somebody. There is an unusual favor coming upon you between now and the end of this year. The favor will hit you from every angle. In the name of Jesus Christ. That God will bring your way people that will cause you to rise up. In the name of Jesus Christ. People that will cause you to be plenteous in goods. God will bring them your way. Can I hear louder? Amen. I decree to every businessman and woman here, the hand of the Lord is coming upon your business today. In the name of Jesus, go and prosper. Go and excel. Go and prosper. Go and excel. For professionals here, I decree and declare the same anointing upon Joseph, where God blessed Potiphar because of Joseph. Where you work, they begin to prosper. And they will know that it was because of you that their company began to grow. In the name of Jesus, go and excel. Go and excel. When others are saying there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, when others are struggling, you will begin to excel. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed. Hallelujah. For Jesus, you can do it better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so very much for blessing us this morning. Um, we we'll just ask maybe just two questions because of our time. And um, I mean, we were so blessed. Yes or yes? No, there's no other option. Is that yes or yes? Um, I, I particularly like that one where you talked about female painter. You know, as I said, it, my mind just went towards the choir stand. Maybe there will be somebody from the choir who will be the first female painter. <laughs> Amen. But please, would you tell us your story? Has it always been this rosy? And what actually inspired you to just come out of poverty if there was anything like that and then to where you are? Wow, very great question. Thank you for that. Thank you for having me. Um, for me was, I, I went to Olabisa on Banjo University. Anybody like that? Great old Suite, great old Uites. Am I the only one? Uh, I, they'd be proud now. Some of you are at the back. You should shout. Great now. Great old Suite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I went to um, Olabisa on Banjo University, formerly Ogun State University. And I studied microbiology. Uh, I did a part-time program there. But on campus, I also pastor. I pastor Winners Campus Fellowship. Uh, so I, had, I started business on campus because I came to Lagos. Funny enough, it was this place. One of my mentors, when I was in secondary school, I came to visit him. And he had the best result from University of Ilorin in his set. But only to come and visit him, he was in a one-room apartment with about eight people. 
And I remember I had to say, Bon kilo shele. Say, ah, <laughs> you know, Lagos is tough. So it dawned on me right there that I needed to start entrepreneurship so that in case I don't get a job, by the time I graduate, I can start my business. So while on campus, I would do business, I would fail. You know, uh, every first Friday I was in Redeem Camp selling popcorn. You know, um, I was trying several things. They were just not working. But I kept at it. And by the time I finished school, I remember printing 100 CV. And I did a cover letter that says, do not pay me until I prove myself. Don't pay me salary for six months. 100. Yes. Until I prove myself. Now, you think I'll get the job. <laughs> the first place I took my CV to, the guy looked at me and said, there's no table and chair. Wow. That's why he cannot give me the job. <laughs> the second place, the secretary took the CV and walked away. For five minutes, she didn't come back. I had to excuse myself. <laughs> right? The third place, the guy looked at me and said, let me be honest with you, there's no job. And I'm talking over 10 years ago. He said, the reality is this, if you're serious you, you, I saw in your CV that you started business on campus. Why not continue those business you started? One of those business was a bulk SMS where people were buying 50 cowboy SMS units, like churches like this. Now, this Sunday service will have sent SMS to all members, reminding them. So I continued the business um, after campus, and gradually, of course, it was difficult. I would go to 20 schools every day, convincing them why they should use my bulk SMS, some will say yes, some will say no. But I continued. By 2015, we became one of the biggest real estate, um, book SMS company in Nigeria. Um, we had the largest phone number database, email database. It was that same 2015 we then branched into real estate. Um, my first land, they gave me for free, you know, in Korodu there. The man came for my digital marketing training. And he said the reason he came was that he has 250 acres. He's struggling to sell. Um, since I'm good at selling, he'll give me 50 acres. As I sell, I should pay him. You know, and that's how we started real estate. Today now, we have more than 30 estates in Nigeria. We just acquired 40 acres in Houston, Texas, in Kerry. I think Pastor will be coming to see it in December as well. And the rest is history. We're in Dubai. We have over 100 properties we control in Dubai. And the rest is history, you know, and then billionaire land banker for those who, who are in real estate or want to go into real estate. Those who, I always say this, that those who train will reign, right? We've come this far because of our investment in learning. I remember somebody was saying to me, you just got 40 acres. You need about 100 million to do this estate you want to do in Houston, right? To raise 100 million dollars is no joke. Are you sure you can do it? What he didn't know is that for the last two, two years, I've been doing a Harvard course on real estate, specifically around how does real estate work in America. I've paid Grant Cardone $200,000 to learn real estate. So that has helped my boldness. If you are scared to do business, the problem is you don't have mentors and you don't have the knowledge. Go and get it first before you start the business. Amazing. Thank you very much. So this is how far we'll go. We really say a big thank you to you. We know this is the first time we're having you here, and definitely it won't be the last. Thank you. Let's put our hands together as we go back.